Hello everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Lana, I am an acrylic artist. Thank you for being here with me today. I so appreciate you stopping in. Hopefully you're gonna grab your paints and paint along. Let's take a look first at what we're gonna be painting. This is a fun, very beginner-friendly Halloween project. Um, I have painted it on a round canvas, which I purchased at Hobby Lobby, so you can grab one there if you want to paint on a similar surface. This a pumpkin can be painted any color, but teals and turquoises and things like that, those are my favorite colors. So I tend to gravitate to those when I'm painting a project. <laughs> I try not to, but uh, it does happen every now and then. Um, but you can certainly paint your pumpkin any color that you want. And it does have some bling 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 on the cobweb. I just could not resist sparking, sparkling up that cobweb with some glitter paint. So uh, we'll be doing that and having a lot of fun with this project. Like I said, it's a very, very beginner friendly project. So I will be using Deco Art Americana acrylic paints. It's uh, just one of these fun projects that make it makes you happy to be painting it. So I uh, hope you are going to paint along. You can grab a full packet PDF download from my website lanalam.com which includes step-by-step -step written instructions, step-by-step -step color photos, a full line drawing, a full color photo, and every single product or tool that I used for this design is listed in that packet. So you can grab that at lanalam.com. And while you are here with me right now, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me get out there for more people to be able to see my videos and to be able to learn to paint because that is my passion, teaching people to paint. So uh, I hope you will subscribe while you're here. Please hit the notification bell so you know anytime I go live, anytime I post a video, or anytime I post on my community tab. You can see all of that firsthand before anybody else does. So please be sure and hit that bell. Please comment, please like, and please share. It's all going to help me out getting out there to as many people as want to learn to paint. So if you are ready, let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get painting. Okay, we're going to start this surface. <clears throat> we have a 10 inch round canvas panel that I bought at Hobby Lobby. Um, we're going to see how it holds up for this. Okay, so I am going to triple load my roller with lavender, dioxanine purple, and lilac meadow. I have all three colors on my roller. I've got some white, so I can add some white here in a minute. And I'm just going to start lightly just tapping this into the background. A little bit more lilac meadow. I might add a little bit of white in there. Some more dioxanine purple. And let's do this. It's going to take two layers to cover this canvas. We want kind of a mottled background. I want more white in here. Now, a lot of times I'll do this with a, a sponge. A uh, sponge is a lot of fun to use doing this kind of background. I definitely want more white. A little more dioxanine purple. And get a little mottled background. I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to repeat. When it dries I can tell where I need maybe a little bit more darker, a little bit lighter. Um, but I think a purple background is going to be really fun for this project. Okay, my background's a little darker than what I want. So I definitely want some more white. And I'm going to grab... I thought about using peacock teal, but I think I'm actually going to use turquoise. I'm going to put turquoise in my... Let me get a little bit of turquoise on here. 
So I've got turquoise, white, and then our main color, which is lavender. Grab more lavender, a little bit of dioxin purple. Ooh, okay, I got into that that teal, peacock teal. I really did not want that in my background, <laughs> but it's in there now. That's the, uh, the turquoise that I really like. So I'm going to get me some white out here because it's uh, mixing my palette. So this is not doing a bad job here. I definitely prefer the uh, sponge when doing this kind of mottled background. I have done many mottled backgrounds with the foam roller before, but um, you can just paint it a solid color if you want, but uh, you should be seeing varied colors in there. And we're not going to see a lot of this. A little bit more of that turquoise. White. And just keep playing around with it till you've got a background that you are totally happy with. This is a fall looking painting so we don't have to you know, get too carried away with it. And I think that gives me a nice little fun little background right there. I'm happy with that, so we're going to get this dry. Okay, my base coat is dry. I'm going to use this circle temp, uh, stencil to uh, paint in my moon. I'm going to paint it white. Probably come back and add some grays in there later. So I'm just going to grab a large stencil brush circle in here. Okay, if I can see a little bit of that purple through it, because I'm going to be doing more stuff. So, that's our moon. Now, I want to take this stencil brush and remove a lot of the paint out of it. And I'm going to start creating some, like, I don't know, fog or whatever it's happening in the background. You know, it's Halloween. I'm just going to go back and forth and work it down. Our pumpkin's going to go right here. We're going to have stuff around our pumpkin. And we're just going to work it down. little bit more. Load it, offload it. Okay. It wasn't quite dry there, so it drug some out, but Putting a couple of bats there, so we should be okay. Tap a little bit in. It's already looking like a little bit of a mottled look. I think I'm going to add a tiny bit of the light purple on my brush and tap some of that in there.
right away. A lot of ways that you can paint a moon in. Um, you know, be as creative with it as you want to. Okay, so I gotta get that dry and then I'm gonna go ahead and transfer on my pumpkin and just the outside lines of my cobweb that goes behind my pumpkin. I'm not even sure I'm gonna do the cobweb around the whole thing. I drew it in there and I'm thinking maybe just half of it will get cobwebs. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. All right, I put my line drawing of just my pumpkin and my hat, which I actually need to add the stripe lines on the hat before I can paint the hat in. So let me quickly add these stripe lines back in here. Okay, got those lines on there. Okay, so we're going to base in the pumpkin. I want a turquoise pumpkin. Th those are the colors I have in my home. I actually painted little pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, uh, turquoise colors, um, metallic and silver to go for my Halloween theme. So um, I'm going to do the same with this. So I'm going to mix turquoise and white. I'm going to do two white, one turquoise, and we're going to paint in our pumpkin. just a light teal color. You can go with the traditional oranges. That will be just fine. Um, what, whatever colors that you like for your Halloween colors. It, it does not have to be the exact colors that I paint. This is where you can kind of take a little bit of creativity in your painting and paint it how you want to see it. But I'm a fan of the turquoise. Uh, probably my favorite color. A little bit more blue in there. I drew my lines on kind of dark, so I definitely want to paint over those lines. This is a pretty opaque color, so it should cover it up just fine. Uh, if it's a more transparent color that you're using, then it will require several coats or just paint right up to it and you can come back. If you paint right up to it, you can still see the line. You can go in and erase it when your paint is dry. So that's what I do if, you know, I want to erase the lines at a later point. Alright, this is one coat, and I might lighten it just a little bit on the second coat. We'll see how this dries. This may dry a little bit darker than what I want it to dry, uh, but we'll see. Everything takes two coats to get good full coverage, and the second coat doesn't have to be heavy paint. Just send your paint down and go. Alright, the hat I'm going to make black and white. Actually, I might make it, no, I'm going to make it black and gray, I think is what I decided. So I'm going to have some strips that are painted black and some that are gray. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the brim of the hat with black, but I'm going to put a, a line of gray. I've got a wild hair on this brush. I think I need to take a second and cut that off. That might cause me some issues here. Oop, just stuck my hand in the blue. Don't do that. need to get my easel out here. This is just straight lamp black here. A playful little piece, so I hope it turns out cute. Okay, I'm 
going to get a smaller brush for my stripes because this one's going to be too big to go through that. Okay, grabbed a round brush here. Still forgot to get my easel. I have to get a little bit bigger round brush. I'm just going to fill in with black. Outlining and then filling in is the easiest way to paint this, these sections. I got a wild hair on this brush too. They're looking super cute. Those are black stripes. I really didn't need to rinse my brush, but I want to cut that little wild hair off of there. And then I'm going to mix some gray. Now, if you want to grab a like gray sky color, you could probably use that. I'll probably mix something fairly close. So I'm going to take my white, way too much water in my brush, and black, and mix a fairly light to gray. This might be just a little bit darker than gray sky, but it's going to be pretty close. camera and finish these stripes because it's just like I did the black ones. No difference whatsoever. So we'll make it gray all the way up. Okay I'm going to go ahead and apply my second coat. So I do want my pumpkin to be a little bit lighter so I'm going to add another white into the mix. So that's going to be about three whites and one turquoise. Let's send this down because it doesn't need to be heavy heavy paint here. Thin paint is all we need for our second coat. We're just kind of filling in where the canvas or whatever surface you're painting on didn't quite cover well. There's a hair there. So I'm just doing a wash of color basically. Um, where I've got, you know, plenty of paint in, in the wash to give it good color, but it's, it's a thin layer. Okay. 
Okay. That looks pretty good. A little bit lighter. I like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to go quickly put on my second coat on my hat. So we can get ready to move on. Okay, uh, I want to put a gray band along the edge of the front of the hat. I'll let that dry and then I will repeat that. Alright, I didn't have my overhead lights on. No wonder it was so dark over here. Okay, we're going to start um, adding some detail to our pumpkin here. Um, you can use a half inch or a three eighths inch angle. I'm not sure which one I want to use here. I think I might start with a half inch. We're just going to use straight turquoise. Excuse me, turquoise to um, shade our pumpkin. We've got pretty wet paint here. My brush has moisture in it, so we can make a nice smooth gradation of color there. side of this one. Okay. And on these two we'll go on the outside. Well, we're doing the outside of all of them here. I really need to get my palette paper out so I can have a bigger area for my paint so I can spritz water on it. going to widen those floats. That's our initial float, letting it get good and dry. Okay, I don't think I put my second coat on my brim there. Gray, so I need to do that real quick. Okay, we're just going to stay here working on the pumpkin, so I'm going to dry it very quickly. I did erase all of my graphite lines after I got my base coats on and they were dry. And you probably can't see, but I, I did draw on some shapes of where I want cobwebs. One there, a little one here, and then one over here. So, um, not going to be quite like how I originally drew it, but uh, very, still very similar. Okay, we're going to go in and repeat that float. I'm going to let the paint go a little bit farther over on my brush. So it can come over into this section a little bit. More through the, the fatter areas is where I'm trying to um, keep that. Touch too much water. dry this so we can go up underneath the hat and along the bottom. We'll make some key darkening places on here because that's just the way that I like to make my pumpkins. Make sure it's cool before you start applying your paint because that will heat set the paint immediately and you won't be able to move it.
A little bit of shadow up there. A little bit on the bottom. And then in this center section here, I always like to darken at the bottom down here. And kind of round it up. And start giving that center section some of its its form. So hopefully that's showing up well for you on camera. Okay, we're going to darken a few areas by adding... Um, well, I was going to add black, but I add. Let me put some dioxin purple out and see how well that will darken that blue. I might have to go with a black, but yeah, that that's too bright of a color that dioxin purple. So I'll just get a touch of black and darken that blue a little bit. You know, a little bit of black goes a long way, so just sneak up on that. We're going to create some, okay, some really dark areas. A little bit of moisture in my brush. Let's grab a little bit more blue in that mix. And I'm just going to make some, some darker areas in here. back with my finger because that's really dark. And they all don't have to be in the exact same place. For me, they don't have to be. If you, you know, want them to follow a, a path, and they can. I'm going to put some <clears throat> of this darker color underneath the hat. black. This is just a sneak up on the black kind of thing. Um, it's just one of those things where you, you're you just kind of making a gray blue here. You don't want the black to overtake. sure what, where that's coming from. Okay, I'm going to do this color at the bottom of the pumpkin as well. And you can go up a little bit on each section and start forming them a little bit. We'll be having some leaves come down at the bottom of this, so we don't have to be perfect with the bottom. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, that's that's our shading. We've done two shadings now, one with just the turquoise. Um, and then one with turquoise, just a tiny touch of black. All right, let's highlight on our pumpkin. We're going to do Snow White. Now, we're going to go on the opposite side of the section that we shaded. So we shaded here. On this section, we shaded right here next to that section. So we're going to highlight there. On this one, we shaded here on this section. And we're going to highlight on this section. So we're going to highlight with Snow White. And we'll have to do it a couple of times to get it to, to kind of pop in here. Now you could blend a little turquoise in here and start with uh, a more softer um, highlight. I'm going to mop that so it will kind of push it down into the pumpkin a little bit. And this will, this will fade into the pumpkin quite a bit. 
It probably looks pretty stark right now, but um, it'll fade. And I'm going to kind of walk that over just a little bit into that water that I laid down with the water edge of my brush. And then take my mop brush. And I'm going to very lightly tap through that. That's going to soften that and diffuse it. And that section there, uh, I could have softened a little bit better. So when I do my second in there, we will do that. Okay, now this one we're going to dry brush um, in it. But we're going to start by adding just a little highlight on each edge. And then dry brush down the centers. with it. Do some here. You notice I'm only doing through the center. I'm not going all the way up to the top and I definitely don't want to get into my shading areas anywhere. Mop brushes you use dry. Clean them off on a damp place on your paper towel and then dry them off on a dry place. Since I'm doing the same color here, I'm just drying off my mop brush for this particular uh, floating here. Because it's okay if it transfers some of that paint back onto it since it's the same color. But that's why you want to clean your mop brush because um, when you go to... Um, use it the next time. If there's any paint on there, it just transfers right onto your your surface. It reactivates that paint in the brush. and Then you have a color in a place you don't want to have it. Okay, I want to dry brush through the center of this pumpkin. So I'm just going to grab an old brush and get a dry paper towel. I'm using my brush dry. I've loaded it with some white. I'm going to off... Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I'll get a different old brush because that one I got into my purple. All right, here we go. White paint, not purple. And there we go. I'm just going to kind of scrub this through the center here. You can use any kind of old brush that you want to use. I'm going to repeat that. It doesn't have to be, this is just a regular flat brush, you know, that's kind of worn out. I might come over here and do a little bit of dry brushing on some of these sections because it will make it a little more diffused. But I really like to have it in my center section, have that section pretty bold. Uh, so that looks pretty good for my dry brushing right there. So that's our highlights. Um, So I want, I think I'm going to add a, a few touches of maybe some purple on my pumpkin. Just to bring in some of the background onto it. So I think I'll use my lavender for that. I put out way too much turquoise to paint my pumpkin in. Not sure what I was thinking, but that's enough to probably do four pumpkins. Alright, a little kind of wash of lavender. Just, you know, you just pick some places on your pumpkin that you want to see this color kind of pop. I'm going to put his face on next. Now this is, you know, this is a pretty thin laying in of lavender. I don't, I have a lot of water in my brush, not a lot of paint, so it's basically just a wash of lavender. Some of this we may not see down here after we put some leaves in, but... Okay, 
That looks pretty good. Uh, you can add that on as many times as you, you know, until you've got it a nice color that you want. We may come back in at the end and add more colors uh, from various colors that we're going to put around our pumpkin. So let's uh, make sure this is dry and then we're going to transfer on the face. Okay, I got my face transferred on here. Um, I originally had wanted to do a more kind of scary face, but um, I decided since this is more whimsical, I'll just stick with just a simple face here. So I'm going to paint in these sections with a um, very dark gray. I don't want it to be black. I do want it to be a dark gray because I want to be able to shade with some black. And hopefully they'll end up looking more black when we're done. So I'm just mixing white and black together. Um, pro it's probably a one-to-one -one mix just to lighten up that black. Mixing as I go here. I'm not sure my eyes are the same size. I might try to adjust this one a little bit. Using a six flat brush here. A four would be good as well. I'm really staying up on the tip of the brush as I go into that corner there. Picking up some paint on the tip of my brush there because I needed to fill in there. Just using the tips of the bristles there. Could definitely go to a round brush to fill this in. So we'll let that dry. And we'll need a second coat to get it nice and filled in there. I'll, I'll erase my graphite lines when it gets dry. I've got my two coats on. I erase my graphite lines off from around my uh, pumpkin face. <laughs> okay, so let's add some um, highlighting and shading around. So I want the um, highlight to be the mix of turquoise and white. Uh, mostly white. I might have to darken this if I don't like how dark it is. I'm going to go along this edge. look dark or not dark but deep and on the nose I'm going to do a little bit down here as well I think on the eye I'm going to go on this, this eye I'm going to go on this side. And 
and just barely put one down here. mouth I think I'm mostly going to just go along the um, bottom edge I'm just going right along that line I'm not going inside the mouth okay and then this tooth here edge I'm just using a small round brush here this edge I'm not 100% sure where I want to put it but I think I'll go on this side and then I'm just gonna very very lightly along that top. Just super, super, super thin. You can leave that off if you want, but just really, really thin. All right, should be dry. So I can go back and do a second coat on here. crooked there. I think I need to shade um, along the top of those those top teeth. So I'm going to use that turquoise and black mix. stopped at that tooth. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a highlight along the top of the mouth here with some white. On, on the pumpkin part. I think that's going to help set that a little bit. Um, let's see, do I want to do some uh, around the eyes as well? Maybe on the side. Thank you. 
And then I'll put a little bit of shadow, that shadow color underneath. Down here. help get the mouth to look more complete. I'll go under the eyes, under the nose. Okay. Alright, that looks pretty good. I need to highlight with just straight white in the centers of my areas around my mouth and my eyes and nose. I'll use just straight white for that. I'm just going to go in the center, in the center, in the center, in the center, 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 down here. And the center. A little bit on the top of this tooth. Okay. Alright, I want to shade inside the eyes now with just black. And I think I'll go to my quarter inch angle brush. Has a look and so cute. Straight black. Inside here. See we're seeing just a little bit of that gray color in there. Doing a little triangle, starting skinny at the top, so I'm on the toe, then I'm pushing the brush more flat to get down here to this corner, and then I'm curving it around and just going along the tip of the brush down that bottom edge. Okay, so this, the corners of the mouth will be dark. bottom down here. You can do this before you add your line if you want to, if you're afraid you're going to mess up your line there. You can certainly do it before. And I definitely want to put by those teeth and push those teeth back a little bit more. Okay, so if you need to repeat, just go ahead and repeat. Repeating just kind of smooths everything out. Make sure that where you want the paint, the paint is He's got a cute face, more whimsical because uh, my first face that I drew was kind of scary. <laughs> so we are going to keep him right there. Um, I might darken a little bit underneath the mouth, maybe, just in the center. That's our blue and a little bit of black.
When I want to paint just a little bit of paint in, I always wipe my paintbrush off on my paper towel before I go here and paint because I don't want um, an overloaded brush that's going to lay in a lot of paint where I don't want it. Alrighty, Daddy. I think he's looking cute as can be. Cute, cute, cute as can be. You can tweak on your highlights a little bit. I think I might brighten up the highlight out here just a scooch. Maybe right through here. Those are going to be the places that the moon's hitting it uh, a little bit more. Okay, I think that's going to finish up our pumpkin. He looks super cute. You can always go darker down here at the bottom, but I think for now I'm going to leave him right where I'm at because when I add what I'm going to add at the bottom, I'll have to kind of shade around it, so that will darken the bottom of this pumpkin as well. So we're going to go up and work on the hat. The hat should be fairly quick to do. Okay, I'm going to use a really old, pretty worn, flat kind of scruffy brush. Not got much bristles on it. It's a pretty stiff brush, and I want a dry brush on my um, hat here with some white. So I'm loading the brush and offloading. That means there's not going to be hardly any paint on this, but I want to create some high areas on my hat. Some like where it's got some wrinkles kind of going in it. You know what I mean? Just dry brushing a few little, just go over it a couple of times just with this white. I'm just using white. It kind of looks gray on there because we're going over black. I'm going to load my brush again, offload, and I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to tap this time so I can get a little bit brighter. area in there. Okay, that looks pretty good for um, some highs. I, I will definitely brighten that, you know, with, with just, I'll just come in with a bold little highlight on it. For up here, we're not going to require a whole lot of um, stuff. Uh, I am going to do like a, maybe a back-to-back -back float down the center with some white. So I'm going to load my brush with white. I've got uh, water in my brush so that this um, kind of fades down in there. And I'm just going to float this down my hat. Flip over. And then go along beside that line again. And then I'm going to take my mop brush and kind of mop down that center line. That's going to soften it and create a little bit of a um, right, I just need that a little bit wider out. Wider, not whiter. W-I-D-E-R. So I'm just putting a little bit more on here and barely going to tap with my mop brush so we're creating a, a highlight on there that almost makes it look like um, silk ribbon I'm gonna go hmm. I feel like I need a little bit of highlight over here on this edge. Um, maybe a little bit here. I'm going to be adding brighter highlights on here. I'm just trying to get it how I feel like it looks. I need to go along each edge with black now 
So that was our initial highlights on here. So we dry brushed white a couple of times down here, back to back float up here, but you could also dry brush up here if you are not comfortable doing a back to back float. You can certainly dry brush and then a little bit of a um, float here. And now I'm going to uh, shade the outer edges with some black. So. I like to start in a black area and then go around all the way down to the brim. You can even go on the brim if you need to. It makes you feel better. And I'm going to start on the brim here, kind of smooth that edge out, and then go up this edge. This is going to connect all of our gray and black areas instead of making them feel like they're all separate. This is going to get them all connected. Tippy tippy toe of the brush right there. That's a very narrow area. We don't want to fill it in. And then we've got our hat done there. Uh, a few other little highlights on there. The hat is really super quick to do. Um, I, I want to get that black dry though. You can repeat that black again if you need to. Okay, I do want to shade a little bit more underneath the hat. Right here. I want it to seem like a little bit more of a shadow. Lot. Let me get a little bit, a little tiny bit more black here. This is just straight black here. It's a pretty, pretty sheer little black right underneath that. Okay. Let's uh, do a brighter little highlight here with some white. Okay. So I want a little bit of highlight along my hat edge here. This is just straight white paint. Okay, so we can kind of see that hat edge. All, all this is going to have to be repeated. So I'm going to put a little highlight here along the edges of these um, areas. go down this edge here and create a brighter highlight. Kind of break it up. Doesn't have to stay the same. A little bit of highlight through here. And then I'm going to go back and repeat on my brim because I really want that to show up a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let's make that a little bit longer. Okay, I think that looks good for our hat. Most of the light's coming over from over here, so the hat was pretty basic. All right, let's work on the cobwebs. They shouldn't take us too long. You're going to want a detail liner. I like the longer bristles, uh, longer bristled detail liners, but you can, you know, use whatever detail liner that um, you like the best. Okay, fresh white paint, fresh white paint. 
if it's thick, you might want to thin it just a little bit. Needs to have good flow to flow off of your brush. So I'm going to create the outside edge of my cobweb first. If I can see where I drew it. I just went straight down here and then we'll have a line that comes here and a line that comes here. I don't think I got correct directly on my um, line that I drew but we're gonna go with it and then we're just gonna come up, connect it there, go down, connect it there, and connect it there. Keep it fairly easy. And you can get as detailed with your cobweb as you would like to. Okay, so there's a big one there. I've got one over here. Let's see if I can see all my lines for it. If you have a specific way that you like to paint cobwebs, by all means, you just go right for it. If you've got a stencil, I did have a, a stencil that I created with cobwebs, but it was, um, those cobwebs are pretty small, and I wanted some bigger ones in here. They don't have to be as far apart as what I'm making them. They can be closer. You can have more stuff going on with them. Okay, so there's that one. Super cute! And I've got a little one here. And so this one I'm going to draw, paint in the straight lines. My paint is inky consistency, so I'm able to stay up on the very tip of this brush. I do not want to go onto my hat though, so I'll remove that and I just stuck my hand in the I just stuck my hand in the cobweb. Get that off me before I transfer it somewhere else. Alright, we're just gonna go and create a fun little cobweb here. Okay. Super cute, super easy. This one needs to be a little bit thicker. Okay. Now, one coat's really all you need for your cobwebs. I am going to bling up my cobwebs though. So I wanna get them dry and then I'm gonna put some glamour dust on those lines that I just created. How cute is that, you guys? I am loving it. Okay, let's do some glamour dust. Bling it up, bling it up, bling it up. So you want to make sure you're shook up pretty good. This bottle hasn't been used yet, so it really needs some shaking. I've got my glamour dust out. Now, 
This is a totally optional step. You do not have to do this, but I do love me some bling bling bling. And it won't show up a whoa, okay. That was like a lot of glamour dust right there. It won't show up a whole lot until it is dry. Chunky monkey. Must be starting to get a little old. But it's still got its bling. That's what counts. Alright, so I'm just going to go on each line and put some glamour dust on. I might do two coats, I might do one coat. I haven't decided yet. But this is how we're going to do it, just like we painted in the um, cobweb initially. So I'm just going to go off camera and do this because this is a little bit tedious. And I will come back when it is on here and dry. Maybe you'll be able to see it the bling. All right, we're going to move on. My glamour dust, everything's dry there. <clears throat> I'm going to put some bats in the uh, moon. So I kind of drew some up in here and then one over here. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm just going to stencil them on here, but you can certainly put them on, you know, by hand. Just draw them on and put them in by hand. There's one little bat. And then I'll put this little one kind of down here. I'm using a small stencil brush, a size 3 8. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put one over here. Or maybe two, because I just got outside my lines there. And I'll clean that up with a damp brush real quick. So we got three cute little bats using a stencil of any kind. This is a cute little ghoul, which is on my website. Stencil. <clears throat> And then we're going to work on our leaves down here. And we're also going to use uh, a stencil for that. And I'm going to use a leaf stencil. So I'm going to clean this little brush out and maybe use it for a darker color later. And I'm going to grab another stencil brush. And we are going to um, put our leaves in. <clears throat> so I want to base them all in with, uh, I think yellow. I've got antique gold here, so <clears throat> I think I'll use that for my base for my leaves, and then we'll come back and add colors on top of that, like oranges and yellows and greens. So I'll put some oranges and greens and yellows out um, I may put some brown out for my oak leaves. <clears throat> Just some nice fall colors that you like. So the colors I've got is antique gold, jack-o'-lantern orange. And then I've got some uh, browns. I've also got bright yellow. Um, 
some sable brown for like basing in some of the oak leaves. We'll see if that works. And then we've got uh, some raw ember. You can use raw ember. I think raw ember is all I got out. All right. <clears throat> and I've got white on my palette too. So let's just start um, laying in some leaves. Um, I want to start with this leaf here. I'm trying to see what leaves I want to have on top. So this leaf will be a little bit behind. I'm going to bring it up on the pumpkin like this. I think I better tape down my... <coughs> stencil here so it doesn't move. Actually, I think this is the leaf here that I want to start with. That looks like the one that I liked better. It's a little bit bigger. I'm actually going to tape <coughs> in those two places so that I don't accidentally get um, into those. I'm going to also take this edge down a little bit because <clears throat> it's kind of popped up there. So I'm going to go into my antique gold and then my dry paper towel. And we'll start putting this in here. I might add a little bit of white into that to lighten that. I think that would make that a little bit better color for our base coat. Yes, I like that much better. So I'm just going to tap this leaf in here. We're going to finish this leaf completely before we move on to the next leaf. Okay, that's the yellow, the kind of golden yellow. I'm going to grab some orange. going to kind of blend because I have I still have yellow on my brush. And I'll work a little bit more yellow into my brush, tap it off on my paper towel, and try and get this a little bit brighter. Definitely going to have to let that dry <coughs> and come back with a little bit this is yellow, bright yellow. And you could use some reds in here, but I'm not I'm not using reds anywhere. I think I will put some turquoise out though. We can put some turquoise in our leaves. Or some uh, of the lavender, either one. It'll look nice. a separate brush from the orange because it's blending in too much with my yellow. And jack o' lantern orange is a pretty transparent, pretty transparent orange. Okay, go back to my yellow, maybe a little bit of that gold. seems like a pretty good leaf right there. All right, so I have to dry it. <coughs> we can only kind of do one leaf at a time. I'm going to bring another one over this way and then a few more down here. We're going to shade and detail out the leaves, but I need to get this one dry first. Okay, I've got this leaf that I want to come out from underneath that one that I just did. I'm not sure that's the angle that I want though. More this way. So technically I should have put this leaf on first. So I mixed some turquoise and some yellow uh, to get a little bit of a green color here. And I really don't want to go into that other leaf that I just did. So I'm going to kind of tap and 
get around it. Because I want this one to be underneath. When I come in shade, I'll, it will clean all of that up. green one tucked underneath there. Um, I want to put an oak leaf in here. So I got this oak leaf. And I'm going to remove this piece of tape. And put it over here. I actually want to, I think, tape off that oak down there. And this is one I'll probably use some brown to begin this one. Let's see. I think I still want this one to be underneath. So if you're painting them in, you're going to paint them in this way. Uh, this is sable brown. That was a mix of a turquoise and bright yellow. And this one was the golden, uh, not golden, it was um, antique gold. I'm going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of gold, maybe lighten up that brown a little bit. Not make my oak leaf quite so dark. Okay, I'm going to wipe off my brush. I do want to get a little bit of some other colors on there. Probably some green, maybe. So I'm going to go into my yellow and my blue. Off and then tap a little bit of this color into this leaf. A little bit darker brown. I think that one will be pretty good. Camera there. I am going to take my damp brush and clean off this leaf tip here. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just going to work my way around with, you know, varying leaves, whatever whatever leaves you want to throw in here. Um, I'm going to give a little piece of maybe this leaf underneath here. And I think I'll do a little bit of gold gold and yellow. Just throw a little piece of leaf down underneath there. We'll detail it out later. Um, I'm going to go to my smaller, I have a smaller or different shaped. Those two leaves are a little bit different shaped. Um, I'm going to put a little piece of one down here. Oh. oh, I think I'll just put this over the oak one. Coming up here, more green, I think. So that's the turquoise and the bright yellow mixed together. Tap it off, and then go in here and 
these leaf shapes will all be drawn out for you, but um, you know, if you have a favorite leaf stencil that you want to use, I'll get a little bit of white in there. A little bit too much paint on my brush. I'll clean up this edge and that edge a little bit and I kind of removed the paint there because it wasn't, wasn't dry underneath there. All right, now it looks like I need to add at least one more leaf on here. So I'm gonna add a piece of an oak leaf. Maybe that one right there. That one looks like a pretty decent. So I'm just using my browns and some white. gold in here. A little bit of that darker brown, I think. Okay, a couple of oak leaves. And then down here we'll just darken with some shading. So we've got our leaves placed in there. And like I said, you can paint these in by hand. You don't have to stencil them in. Um, so now we're going to detail on all these leaves and bring them up to uh, looking good. So uh, I'm gonna wash all my stencil brushes out now because I think I'm done with them. Okay, let's begin shading on our leaves. And I'm going to do the green ones first. And so my colors on my palette are bright yellow. These are the colors that I used in the leaves themselves, except for this one. This is leaf green. When I got my green for my leaves, I mixed turquoise and yellow. So you can do either, use leaf green or mix the two. Bright yellow, antique gold, jack-o'-lantern orange, leaf green, turquoise, sable brown, raw umber, and black. So I'm going to mix my green and a little bit of black to make a darker green. Just a tiny bit of black at a time to get a nice dark green. And we'll do our traditional floating stuff here and darken our leaves at their bases. sure how that leaf went but that's how it's going now and if you have a stencil that you like just by all means use the stencil you can do all of the shading and highlighting right while the stencil is on there start on that one. Let's go over to here to this one and I'm not really sure how this one was shaped there but we'll just give it that kind of shape. We're going to take this dark green all the way down into there and then this leaf is probably shaped similar to that. I 
need to get some water on my palette because my brush is really dry. Okay. Let's put it in there like that. It's very, very choppy. Okay, and then we're going to highlight with a mix of bright yellow and white. Oh, I didn't put white on my palette, so you want to add snow white onto your palette as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my bright yellow and white and mix them together. Two yellow, one white. This will be pretty transparent. You can add other colors into this leaf. If you would like to, I'm, I'll probably add some teal into that because I think it will look good. And go over here and highlight this one. Into there. So I'm going to grab a little bit of teal on my brush. Put a little bit in there, you know, just make it a little, a little playful. I think that will be fun. Okay, and the veins on that particular one, we're just going to make leaf green, I think. May add a touch of black to it, just to darken up those veins. Same here. This one will just get some straight little lines. And again, I'm going to tap it with my finger. That's going to just diffuse that just a little bit. Keep it from being quite so in your face. Okay, let's move on to this particular leaf. And I'm going to shade it with some orange on more orangey edges. This is that jack-o'-lantern orange. So this is going to brighten up that color a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to go into yellow, the bright yellow, and it's a transparent color, so it's just going to be kind of a for me, like a glaze on top of that yellow that's underneath it already. Blend it into my orange just slightly. Wipe my brush off. I'm going to grab some green and a yellow on my brush. And then go over here and add a little bit of green. This will be a really bright green because leaf green is kind of bright. And then I'm going to do antique gold down here on this edge. And we just bring all those colors together. Make them all happy, happy, happy together. How fun is that leaf? I do need to darken at the base of it, but I'm going to go ahead and put the um, center vein in this one. And I'm thinking I want to use antique gold. Let's see if it will even show up in here. Um, maybe mix a little brown with it. That's sable brown. I don't know, maybe it needs white. It's not really showing up. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of white in there. Antique gold, sable brown, and white. Okay. I'm 
have to add some darker brown in there. It's not quite how I would like to see it. So this is raw ember. So I'd say mix some raw ember and I don't know, a little bit of sable brown together. That ought to give a nice nice color in there. I am going to darken down here at the base. I'll get it dry first. And then I think we will use... Um, I really kind of want to use orange, so I'm going to take my orange and some raw ember. Darken that. This is very transparent. Just give it a little, little darkness there at the base. Okay, this little bitty teeny tiny green one that I put down here, uh, I'm going to mix some leaf green and bright yellow. And we're just going to kind of green this one up down in here. Just make it a little more green, not too much. And then I'm going to do bright yellow and white on the other part of it. A little more bright yellow in there, make it a little more yellowy. Maybe a touch of antique gold. just a small little leaf that's kind of peeking out so we're not going to do too much with that. Okay this oak leaf we're going to grab some raw umber and see if I can see my shapes here. I'm going to go down the left side with the raw ember. And then on the opposite side, I think I will use some antique gold and white, maybe. Let me determine my... I might have to add some green in there. Okay, that's way too bright. Well, let's go antique gold and green. Leaf green. Go back into some of my raw umber. Okay. I'll probably make the veins on that just raw ember. So thin some down. Okay. Just gonna lightly touch that, kind of diffuse it. Crazy and carried away. Okay, so I'm going to do this other maple or oak leaf the same way. Use my raw ember. And go around this other maple leaf, which we will use the same colors that we used over there on it. And then we 
just a little bit of antique and a little bit of leaf green, I believe. There's some green in these. Not too much. Those are the only colors we're going to add in there on those. And then our veins again are the raw umber. Okay, touch back to diffuse. And then we'll finish this other oak leaf here, or maple leaf. Some orange in here. See, I put it on top of this one, so I'll add some orange here. Wipe off and go into some bright yellow. Wipe off, I'm going to get a little bit of green. And go add some yellow to that, make it a little brighter. another nice little uh, maple leaf and then we did the two browns is that what we did for our veins gently diffuse all right so now we can start shading on these a little bit you know to kind of lift them up I think I'll stay with this. I'm going to use my black and some turquoise. Now any of these leaves that you want to go in and add turquoise to, you certainly can. I think that would look nice. So we're going to go in the background here. Places we can kind of see the background. They just kind of fade away over there. You can see the background here. We also need to use this color to shade on the pumpkin. Where the leaves lay over each other. So this color, this is the turquoise and black. leaves on our pumpkin. Okay. Paint on the far side of my brush. I don't want paint on the far side of my brush. Let me just rinse it out and reload it because I've got to have that water edge. Brushes separating like that. It's kind of annoying. Okay, 
I also want to take this mix and separate my leaves with this mix. This is making like a blue gray. So this one, this one's pretty separated already. A little bit more black in there. I have to get me a different brush. This one's really separating badly. this color into all of our darkest places here. So right through here, these places that aren't quite, didn't quite get dark enough with the first coat, we'll go ahead and put that in there. This is the black-blue mix. Sure which leaf lays on top there. It kind of looks like this one lays on top. Just a tad bit confused by that one. Also put this on the bottom of the leaves. Or down here at the bottom. I'll kind of set all of that in there nicely. Okay, I think some of our leaves need a little bit of a highlight, so I'm going to take some white. some white. Just a little kiss of white here and there, I think, helps that a lot. So the last thing we need to do is to shade around the entire perimeter here. Okay, I've taken it off of my easel so that I can do the outside border shading. And I'm going to use dioxanine purple because it's a transparent color and I think it will make a nice shading color to go around the entire perimeter of this. So I want to use a fairly large brush here and I'm just going to side load it. I'm going to make my paint fairly sheer by working the water in my brush into this paint so it makes it fairly sheer. And we're just going to go all the way around.
Okay, I'm just going from leaf to leaf here. that finishes it off nicely. You can bring this down along the bottom if you want, you know, just to make it cohesive, but you know, I don't know that you're going to notice it much down here because we put that black blue. So, don't feel like you need to. But there we go. That is a fun little um fall project right there. Let's see what I call this one. Spooktacular fall. I think it turned out super cute. Oh, one more thing that we can do um, to kind of make our cobwebs stand out a little bit is to shade underneath them with a little uh, kind of washy black. And this will make them look a little, little bit lifted. pretty dark. Don't d doesn't need to be quite that dark and you don't have to do them all just one here and there. I can remove a little bit of that. I have got the biggest mess on my table ever. <laughs> I feel like I completely forgot how to be organized in my painting. That kind of lifts up the cobwebs a little bit. I think that makes them pretty darn cute. Okay, I'll go over here and do a few on this one. I'm just staying right next to that edge. Not letting it come out too wide at all. Alright, I think that lifts those up, brings them a little more forward. I like it. Um, we can also I think would be a good idea to shade. Goodness, that brush has tons of water in it. A very sheer, 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 sheer. I might make this the blue-black here. I'm really working it into my brush. Alright, through here. This one I think could use a little bit of shadow. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I think our shadows are good now. Alrighty, daddy. Looking good. Me like, me like, me like. I hope you like. It's a little play on a fall painting. And uh, you can make your pumpkin truly if you want to make him orange orange with the uh, 
black and gray hat would still be super, super cute, but um, I wanted a blue pumpkin on this one, so there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me. Um, I love painting fall, but I love kind of mixing it up a little bit. Still getting those fall colors in there, but creating something a little bit different. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you have. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. I appreciate you guys being here. I hope that you paint this. Check out my website, lanalam.com, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.